Hello and welcome to Win Some Loose More. My name is Dieter and you join me for Why I Like, a series of videos where I take you through some of the games in our collection and I tell you why I like them. Today I'm telling you why I like Hanami Koji. Hanami Koji is a two player only card game and employs a couple of mechanics, the main of which is uh, I split, you choose, or I cut, you choose. Um, so why don't I show you how it works and then we'll come back and I'll tell you why I like Hanami Koji. So here we have the game set up. Um, each player gets uh, some action tokens, either the orange player or the purple player. I'll explain what the actions do in a minute. We just set up the different geishas. Now the number on them is the points but it's actually how many of them there are in this deck here. So at the beginning of a round, we shuffle, we discard one from the game unseen, so we don't know what it is. Each player gets six, and then this forms the deck. Now, as you can see, a hand now is made up of, it's both the item, the number, and the color corresponding to a card. So we know it's a two, so it's gotta be one of the twos. It's yellow, if you can see that, so it's this person, but also they are holding a scroll, so it's good for colorblind people as well. And so we, from our hand, we have to do two things. We're trying to score as many points as possible, gain the favor by having the majority in as many geishas as possible. If we have a total of 11 or more points, we win the game, or if we have the favor of, I think it's four or more, geishas, we win the game as well. So we have to perform a series of actions. We have four of them in front of us. I'll explain what each of them do. So on your turn, you have to draw a card, add that to your hand, and then perform one of your actions. Now, action one is probably the simplest to explain. Just this one here. If I want to perform action one, and you can do these in any order you like, I would take one card from my hand. Let's say I'm going to take this one. I'm going to put it face down so my opponent doesn't know what it is and I'll place this marker on it. That means I now have a card that I am saving for myself for scoring at the end of the game that my opponent does not know about. That's my whole turn. My opponent takes a turn. When it comes back to me, I draw another card and I have to take another of the actions. Now action two, again I'm explaining them in order but you do them in whatever order you like. Similar to action one, but instead of one to keep for the end of the game, we are discarding two face down from this round. So again, my opponent doesn't know what it is. So, because I've definitely got the majority in this, I can discard this because I've won it already. And now it becomes a tougher choice. Let's get rid of one of these threes. So I put these face down with the number two on it to show I've taken that action, I flip it from the colorful side to the gray side, but it doesn't matter. If it's on the cards, it's clear what you've done. Again, my opponent takes their turn. It comes back to me. I draw another card. And now action three is the first of the I, I split you choose actions. This one, I choose three cards. Can we see that? There we go. Three cards to put face up for both of us. My opponent gets to choose one of them to take, which means I am left with the other two. Now, is there a good thing from, for me to do here? Tricky, tricky, tricky. Let's say... Oh, that is annoying. Three... Actually, in this case, let me just jump ahead because <laughs> I wouldn't do action three. I would do action four, which is very similar. Come on. There it is where I choose four cards, place them in two groups. So let's say that, and then my opponent chooses one group and I gain the other group. Now, because of the way my hand is set up, no matter what happens, if I make two groups here, one of the four, one of the five, whichever one they take, I'm guaranteed to get the other. So they would take this, and this would go on their side there, and their side there, whilst on my side, I would put the four here and the five here, and again for me, I flip it to prove I've done it. And then, for my last turn, once my opponents had their turn, I draw the card, I have three cards left, there's always the correct amount of cards to do all three actions, action one involves one card, action two involves two cards, three, three cards, four, four cards, 
These are the three. I put them face up and my opponent gets to choose one to take from themselves. They're probably going to take this five, put it there, and then I put them in the corresponding places here. Well, so this has been going on, obviously, my opponent has done the same. Let's just discard two, that would have been action two, and we will uh, bring two to me. Let's say these two came to me, oops. These two came to me and this one came to me over the course of the game because of his eyes but you choose. So then we both reveal all of our cards, we put them in the corresponding place. Again, the item tells you, the color tells you, and the number is a clue as well. So I would put these in the right place. Da -da 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 -da. Here we go. And what was my number one? It was this one. And now we look at each of the seven categories and say who has the majority. In this one, he does. So we move that across. In this one, it's a draw, so the marker doesn't go anywhere. Neither of us have earned the favor. This one comes to me. This one is a draw. We don't know where the third one is. Did I discard it? Yes, I did. Um, this one comes to me. This one is a draw, and this one is a draw. So at the end of that, I have a total of five points on my side. They have a total of two points. Neither of us have hit either of the win conditions, so we would shuffle them all up. We bring the card that we discarded back into the play. Okay, it was the five, that's why we drew. Um, we would deal them out again. So then in the next opportunity, we would obviously discard a different one. And then there's the opportunity to steal favor or earn the ones, if anybody, as I say, has four, the favor of four different geishas, or their total points equals 11 or more, they win the game. So why do I like Hanami Koji? Well, it's very fast, that's fun. The box says 15 minutes, it could be five. If you only play one round and you've got quick players, it could be five minutes. If it takes two or three rounds, it could be 20 minutes, but 10 to 15 is a good balance. So as like a little filler game or something you want to play over and over again, it works really well. It's very fast on your turn. You just uh, pick up a card and play one of your actions. It does take longer sometimes though because another great bit, some of those choices on which action you do and when you do them can be excruciating, can be very painful to go, oh, but if I do this, then this happens, and then what if they go for this one, and I want to have this, this, and this, and it's, there's, the po there's the potential for so many variables, not that many, probably five, um, to affect these choices, but they just feel painful because you want to be able to do everything, but you can't because you have to give your opponent some of your cards on action three and four. You have to just get rid of some from the game that could have saved your whole round for action two. Action one is the only safe one, and even then you kind of only want to do it if you know what's going to happen afterwards. So it might be something you do towards the end just to save one before you do the final, you get to choose these other ones. How you stack those choices, here's three of the same, so I definitely get two of them and you only get one of them if you can. Or making the two piles of two clearly ones that they've already won. And so they're going to take those ones and not care about the others. Um, it, but then will they see through that and think through that and go, actually, I've already won those ones, so let's take those other ones. And you go, oh, no, I wanted those ones. It, it's just full of choice. And so within a 5, 10, 15 minute game, you go through some of that mental battle that you might find in a larger, more complex game. And that, that's, that's the joy of it for me. It's a small two player only 10 minute game that I come away from a little bit tired and worn out from having thought so much. Um, or you can play it super casually, I'm not think at all, but <laughs> I go into it a bit. And to have had that kind of depth of mental challenge for me, some people might find this really obvious, really simple, but for me that mental challenge that I might get from a more, uh, a bigger, more complex game it's just really cool and you know am I going to spend 45 pounds on a bigger complex game which gives me the same satisfaction and challenge as a 15 pound game I'm probably going to go for the 15 pound Hanami Koji than the 45 pound 
I don't know, enter whatever game title you want. Um, not any of them, obviously some of them are worth it. Um, but it's, it's a great one. It wouldn't work as more than two. I was about to say it's a shame it's only two player. It's not. It wouldn't work. I, I don't think. I don't. I don't think it would work at all uh, as a larger player count. You'd need to rebalance the whole card system. Um, yeah, it works as two player. It's good for us because we are majority two players. So I suppose if you play with more people, it should go into a collection of fillers rather than just this is your filler game because it is only for two people. So if you've got five six people playing, no thanks, and then you've got two people spare give them this, it's great. Um, or if you like playing with one person to introduce them into games, Hanami Koji, brilliant. They won't have experienced anything like it if they're relatively new. We hadn't when we tried it. Um, the art style is, is nice enough. A um, bit cartoony, which is what it needs. I like that the items on the cards are incorporated into the Geisha cards, so you've got that link, so it's not just colour, because there's three lots of two so it's not the five is easy you go to five it must be belongs to the five category the four are the same once you get the two threes and the three twos a little bit more complicated but because that item is there it's good for colorblind it's good for everything um yeah it's a great game I highly recommend it do check it out that is hanami koji i will put a link below if you are interested Thank you very much for watching. You can find other videos on this channel where we talk about other games. Do subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell icon so you stay notified when we put out new videos. We upload other types of videos onto our Facebook page. Do search that out. You can follow us on Twitter at WSumElmore and on Instagram you can find us as well. I have been Dieter for Winsome Loosemore. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye. I said watch.